Hey guys, it's Justine. And I'm Jenna. And today on episode 16 of the Same Brain Podcast, we have two very special guests. We do. We have Bob Borchers and John Turnus from Apple here to discuss all things iPad. Roll the intro! Uh, I'm Bob Borchers and I work in uh, product marketing at Apple. And I'm John Turnus and I work in hardware engineering. Thank you guys so much for hanging out with us on our podcast. This is super exciting. It was just this tiny thing that we kind of started. We were like obviously home for so much. We're like, let's just start a podcast. And now like we have incredible people like you on our podcast and we're just very thankful. What's even more exciting about all of this is the reason that we started this podcast is because of the iPad Pro. Mm -hmm. The promos that you guys did talking about all of the things that you could do on an iPad. I was like, this seems just too good to be true. Can I actually do a podcast? Can I actually edit full fledged videos on the iPad? And that was kind of a part of my iPad review. So the fact that we're sitting here talking to you guys is because of the iPad. It's true. It's very well, true. And the answer was you could do all of that on the iPad Pro. Mm -hmm. I know. I was honestly so surprised because, I mean, obviously I use the iPad for a lot of things, mostly, you know, some content creation, but I never really put that much effort into seeing if I could use this as my only device. And I think that's one of the things that I was genuinely really shocked by. That's awesome to hear. Yeah. So, I mean, for you guys, like working on these products, you see so many different ways that they're being used. I'm just curious, has there been something that you've seen somebody use an iPad that has been the most unique way that you never really expected? I, I think that's one of the, the coolest things about iPad and what, what makes it so unique is that it can be so many different things to so many different people. And uh, one, one of my favorites goes way back to the beginning was when airline pilots started using iPads to replace their flight bags because they carried you know, tens of pounds of, of paper with all these charts and everything. And they were able to do that on an iPad, which they never had a device that could, that could do that before. So to have a device that could actually replace something obviously as old and as, as pervasive as paper was was a pretty pretty amazing moment right off the bat for sure yeah and i think if you go back to all the way what was it two weeks ago when we had the time flies event and you look at some of those images and some of the things just in the last what six months with the crazy time that we're in just the ways in which iPads have become more indispensable in people's lives, whether it's in healthcare or education or in content creation, any of these things. I think the thing that most impresses me about iPad is just the myriad of ways in which people can use it. And it just kind of naturally integrates whether you're a pilot, whether you're a healthcare worker, whether you're homeschooling, any of these things, um, iPad just kind of fits into that uh, and fits into your life in just such a natural and powerful way. Yeah, and it's, it's always crazy. Just like you say, it's not a computer, but I'm like, I can do so much on here. And it's amazing to see, you know, in this crazy time that we're in, the way that people are adapting. Because as this all sort of happened, I found myself using my iPad more to do email and just because it was easier just to carry around. And before I used to use it much more as sort of a, an entertainment device, mm -hmm. but now, you know, just that so much more to so many people. One of the ways that people have described it that I think is just uh, great and I always go back to it is it's this magical sheet of glass, right? It can adapt and morph and, and in these powerful ways allow you to do things as simple as jotting off an email or as powerful as, you know, having a LiDAR scanner to scan your entire room. It, it really is phenomenal. Or starting a podcast. That's true. Or That's starting very a podcast. True. <laughs> <laughs> so I guess going forward, I mean, you guys have a wide array of options. And I think for a lot of people, even just for my audience, I feel like they also were getting a little overwhelmed. Just people that are going to the website, how do they determine what they need? I think there's, there's a fairly simple way in which we think about the line, which is maybe starting with iPad Pro, that's the device where we're just pushing the envelope, right? This is where we want to invest in technologies and, and really try to push how far can iPad go? You know, can it do podcasting? Can it do AR? Can it do heavier duty video editing and computing and all those things? And then of course, on the other end, we've got our, our iPad that uh, our eighth gen iPad now, which is just this incredible value. It's, it's, it's got all the bones of the original iPad, but we've been bringing more and more technologies down to it. And at that 329 price point, it's just been hugely accessible to so many people. And I think in the last couple of years, the Air represents a, a great opportunity for us. Where we've been able to take some of the most broadly applicable technologies from the Pro and bring them down to a more accessible price point. And so I think the Air is a, a, a real sweet spot for a lot of people. So I think there's three great offerings there. And of course, there's two sides, two sizes on the Pro. Um, and with the big 12.9-inch Pro, that, that again is just pushing what can you do in an iPad? How far can you push it? And so I think a lot of it just depends on what, what people are trying to do and what sit, suits their needs best. For yeah, sure. and I think uh, the thing I was just going to say is that if you look at it and the way we think about it is our job is to provide 
choice and capability. Um, and today we have got the widest kind of most complete range of, of iPad ever. And what that allows people to do is to go in and and think about what are the things that, that are most important to them and then find that iPod, iPad that, that's perfect for it. So it, it really is, I think, our most complete and most powerful lineup from the Pro to you know the 8th Gen to the Mini that all of those you know uh, share some capabilities, but they also have you know very very different kind of potential to them and and so people get to choose and, and really at the end of the day that's what we're trying to do is give people choice and then now with the introduction of like the new neural engine are you able to explain like how that kind of all works for most people that may be like well, what does this actually mean well i, I think uh, and bobby feel free to chime in but i think um you know machine learning has become more and more pervasive and more important in a lot of the computing tasks that we do and of course as a consumer most of the time we don't really see when it's happening right but there's some amazing examples and i think we demonstrated some examples of what you can do in photo editing and and uh, and touch up and some of the work that happens with the pencil in terms of handwriting recognition recognition being able to do so much processing on device in the neural engine because these are incredibly powerful components within within the silicon is really just bringing more possibility and capability to iPads. So we're really excited to be able to get it, get it across the entire line this year. Yeah, and I, I think when when you think about it as as a consumer, the thing that the you know as uh, John said, machine learning is is becoming everywhere it's it's you know being used whether it's in in gaming or photo editing or uh, other places it's just becoming part of the currency of the way you build uh, great experiences i love the pixelmator pro example right we've all been there we've got this scanned image we're zooming in we're cropping and it's like wait where did where did my pixels go <laughs> um and and the power of machine learning is to be able to to go and do some of those amazing things and the great thing about having that capability on the device is you actually keep all that information on the device so as you guys know we are passionate about and and believe so strongly in in privacy and so there's this great comp you know, uh, combination of being able to do these things on device, which means they're faster, they're more powerful, but they're also more private. And so that that we think is just an incredible capability that uh, that developers and consumers will appreciate more and more over time. It's also really exciting to have the, the fingerprint scanner back. It, it makes such a difference because people are so used to using Face ID and things like that. And now going back to school, like this may be the devices that a lot of kids are using. So as long as they have their masks on, they're still able to unlock their iPads. And John should tell you the story. I mean, that is an incredible feat of engineering to get that fingerprint sensor with all of the capability and all of the security into that form factor. I mean, uh, John, it's much smaller uh, than the previous it, version. It, so it, is it, that the same? tech, but basically just smaller form factor? It is. I mean, I would say it's an evolution of the technology, right? I mean, we, we wanted to get to the, the full screen design, and so we wanted to get rid of that, that home button in the chin, and so we had to come up with another place for the Touch ID sensor. And what made it so challenging is this, this really narrow aspect ratio that it has, of course, because it lives in the, uh, in the top button. And so if you think about it, it's only ever seeing a smaller slice of your fingerprint than what a traditional, you know, what, a, what our older sensor could do. And so it has to be incredibly sensitive, and it also has to capture as you go through the enrollment process and then as it continues to adapt over time, a broader view of the fingerprint. So no matter how you touch it with your finger, it's got that, that particular portion captured and so it can do the match. So a lot of algorithm work, a lot of hardcore silicon and engineering work going in to create such a capable sensor in such a tiny little tiny little space. The other thing is that it's not just a tiny little space, it's a really sophisticated space, right? There's a lot going on there. And you were telling me a little bit about some of the things that you have to do with antennas and other things. It was just like, I was blown away. Yeah, we, yeah tell us about it. Yeah, right? Well, well, I think we, it's crazy too, like all this tech and everything that's going in and like, I'm sure, you know, in the back of everyone's mind, it's like, how do we incorporate all of this, but keeping it at a reasonable price point? It, it's that. And it's also, as we pack more things together, you have these incredibly sensitive instruments. And what, what, what what Bob was alluding to is on the cellular iPads, that top portion of the enclosure is the antenna. So we put this incredibly sensitive touch ID sensor right inside an incredibly sensitive antenna and had to figure out how to make them work with each other and not be you know, talking over each other and causing interference. And so as these products become more feature rich and, and obviously more compact and, and condensed, it's becoming more and more critical that our teams are collaborating really, really tightly together because you know the, the touch ID team and the antenna team had to be in lockstep the entire you know, through the entire engineering process to make sure that we had a robust solution that would work well for both subsystems, but, you know, and, and play well together as a whole. I feel like we're so jaded at this point because it's like, oh, cool, a new iPad. You don't even really consider all of those small little details. You're like, well, why can't you do this? You 
physically can't fit this piece of tech <laughs> into the, the current configuration. And I feel like the tech does change so quickly. I mean, I've just, I think there was a Marquez video. He was talking to some other people about, you know, how much it actually costs to put these things into devices. And it kind of blew my mind because it's, it's not a concept that you really think about when you're just, you pick up your phone or your iPad. When, if we're doing our jobs right, it's a whole bunch of hard work and engineering in the background to create something that's just super simple that you don't have to think about, right? If we, if we do that, then we succeed. Yeah, absolutely. I love AR. You know, I, I just feel like the future of augmented reality to sort of stay in your space, but yet kind of, I guess, just alter that. I mean, how do you guys see that kind of playing into gaming and learning? Because you've obviously with the LiDAR in the, the iPad Pro, like that's really pushing this all forward. Yeah, I mean, I think AR obviously has grown by leaps and bounds in the last in the last years and and continues to accelerate um, and adding that lidar scanner in i think unlocked a whole set of new experiences and, and potential and, and honestly i think we're just seeing developers and and folks start to really you know uh grab onto it but the things that that we've seen whether it's scanning your room and being able to put that you know put that couch in etc th those are great but in education you know and with more people uh educating at home being able to bring in and grow a forest within your living room and be able to go and zoom in on a uh, on a butterfly and learn about it and do those kinds of things i dissected a frog yeah. Yeah. yeah, it's it, so crazy because it seems so real. Yeah. And that's where we're going is we're being able to add this whole layer of information and, and excitement to, to the world around you. So it's not like you're, you have to get out of the real world in order to be able to have these experiences, but we're, you know, like the, the name says, augmenting the real world. Um, and that just, I think is, is, is a game changer. I'm very thankful for like the measure and as well as I know you could now place a couch, you know, into like your room because before this, Justine used to use her body to measure. She's like, I'm gonna lay down and like this, she's like, it's about this long, like this will be fine. And like either very large couches or very small pieces of furniture would show up. So now I'm just like, okay, pull out the measure or like pull up the app, just do the AR. And it's, it's working out much better, I think. Yeah, I mean, there's a tremendous amount of algorithm work. Uh, and again, things like machine learning, taking advantage of that neural engine to, to kind of break down the scene and, and figure out what, what's in the room. And then of course the LiDAR scanner brought a whole whole nother level of precision and of course that instantaneous you know surface detection and and the ability to work in all different lighting conditions so it's a combination of the hardware and just the massive amount of of software and algorithm work that that goes on in, in parallel also the color choices of the new <gasps> ipad air i must say are amazing everyone's like are you going to get the blue i'm like okay i really do like the blue like there's just so many good colors i know that's like a very minor thing but it's like it's the thing you're gonna no, see no, the most it's, our it's our favorite okay, question good, okay, so good. We, we've got we've got blue and justine what where are we going oh, I'm, i like the blue i'm definitely going for the pink mm -hmm. there of you course go. yes okay they're so right. nice i feel like everyone on the internet was also very excited they're like look at those colors i'm like i know yeah. well, i think this also goes to show like this is like the iPad is, is, it is here. I mean, the fact that you guys are offering multiple colors and having those choices, and this is something that, you know, kids are gonna be taking to school. This is going to be replacing textbooks. Like textbooks, people just need to remember how expensive <laughs> textbooks. Yeah. When I went to college, I about lost my mind. I was like, I could have bought 14 yeah. computers yes. and now I have a bunch of books that I don't want. And now with Apple Pencil, you can doodle in your textbook yeah. and you oh, can still, yeah. you know. <laughs> exactly, it's beautiful. Don't tell them. I'm Don't, <laughs> don't tell them what happened I'm in my history book. In her history oh, class. No. in high school, she doodled all over her history book and had to go through and erase hundreds of pages worth of doodle. And I actually end up having to pay for it oh, okay. because some of it was in pen. So, oh my gosh, you're a monster. I know. <laughs> <laughs> Probably much easier to uh, digitally erase now with the iPad. Scribble is one of my favorite features. I think that's something that a lot of people have been waiting for. So do you feel this is going to definitely be changing the way that kind of people are learning and even like learning to write? Yeah, I, I do. And I think uh, it was at uh, the developer conference. We actually had a session where it was somebody talking about developing for Scribble. And the example they gave was learning to, you know, to do cursive, right, which we all remember from or I remember, uh, from just these incredibly rote exercises and the teacher coming over and going, no, more loop here, more loop there. With machine learning, with Scribble, you can do all of that just there locally on the device and it can correct you as you go. I mean, it really is phenomenal. And the fact that it can, you know, recognize multiple languages at the same time. I mean, just just think about kind of the, the ability to unlock that potential. The other huge part of it is note-taking. I think the iPad with Pencil is such an incredible note-taking tool that 
again, you know, we did it for years with paper. Now all of a sudden we can take that paper experience. You can go back and search your notes, right? You can tie your notes to an audio recording. I mean, you can do all these incredible things that were never possible before. Have you seen sort of courses be changed at all or kind of consulted on the way to, to sort of instruct to use these devices for you know future students? It's an ongoing area of kind of interest and work for us. And we've been uh, doing uh, a bunch of work with uh, creating materials for families to use for uh, education in this particular time that we're in um, and and just making sure that people know how to best you know take advantage of the the capabilities and really be able to, to do things in a different way and obviously in you know in the last six months we've all had to innovate in terms of the way that we work the way that we learn um, etc and I think the iPad and you know pencil being being there being available have really unlocked you know a lot of potential for for folks whether it's at you know K through five education or uh, in in college um, and there are some, you know, great examples of people kind of integrating these pieces together. Like I said, for my favorite is for language learning because, as I think about learning a language, um, like you know, Japanese or Chinese, where it's a whole different set of of characters, it, you know, it's just magical when you when you start to do that on on something like the the iPad. So I think we're starting to see it, and there's there's a lot more, and, and it's a place we love to see innovation. I think it's just you know uh, a phenomenal uh, opportunity. It's also crazy how the iPad also has completely changed, you know, point of sale. There's nowhere that I go into now. I mean, it's, it's contactless payments and everybody has an iPad and then they're taking payments. I mean, is that something that you guys expected sort of to see this trend, you know, back in the, the beginning of the iPad? For me, it's a little bit hard to remember all the way back to the beginning and, and think about what did we know was going to happen and then what started to happen along the way. But we were obviously super excited about launching the first iPad. And I think we very quickly started to see these little these little different branches of the way people you know were going to take it and use it. And of course, we continue to see that today. So I think some things were were very expected and intentional, but a lot of things were really exciting surprises that we found along the way. And then and then oftentimes we say, hey, we could even make that better. So let's go make some some change in the next generation where we can can let that use case excel even more. Let me just pause for a second and just recognize that the iPad turned ten. <gasps> Right. Yeah. And and for 10 straight wow. years, it's been the number one in customer satisfaction. I would have gotten a cake <laughs> if I would have remembered. Me too. <laughs> would have, oh, my gosh. We actually waited outside. I think it was in San Francisco for one of the, the iPads. And then I remember there was um, a guy that dressed up his his son as an iPad. In, <laughs> I think it was the I might have been the Market Street one in San Francisco because I lived there for a while. And it was the most incredible thing ever. <laughs> See, that's what you, that's when you know you've arrived when somebody is dressing up exactly. as, as an iPad. <laughs> oh, my gosh. I've made Jenna sleep outside for Apple products like way too many times. And she's <laughs> yes. true. excited to admit it. What was the what was the longest line you were in? <laughs> I think that was the iPhone, iPhone 6. 6. Yeah, it was oh, like 55 hours. Over 55 hours. I had, 55 hours. I think that's still like, even to this day, we look back and like we met some incredible people. Like some of our friends came to support us and we still to this day, like always talk about that moment because it was just so like magical. So I don't regret it at all. And the thing that I love is just the, the excitement and the energy and you know, all of the things that you normally wouldn't think of with, you know, electronics or thing, things like that. It's just you form this bond with with the products that you carry around with you. And that's why, like, the iPad Air with those amazing colors is just another way to kind of express who you are and kind of bring bring yourself into that. Um, and that, that, I think, is, you know, what makes those experiences so so magical. And then the unboxing, which you guys are pros at. Um, Huge fan. It's, it, and I think that unboxing experience, I've said this before, you definitely realize when there's a bad bad unboxing experience and like what Apple does is it's just so it's every, just like genuine every time like even like with the latest like watch I opened it I was like oh, I was like look at all like the options and the colors it's just like this weird magical experience and it's just like always very pleasant so what I love is that you've got that a lot of that original packaging right people hold on to that because it's just that experience it's that magical first moment that I think we all love and enjoy um, and it's just uh, part of the the you know what John was saying the magical experience that that we want our products to to to, to kind of create an offer, whether it's the hardware, the software, the packaging, any of those things. So I guess for you guys, I mean, there are so many iPad options. Do you guys want to just like walk us through each iPad, I guess, that you, we have currently out so that people can maybe get a better understanding of, you know, why would I get this one or why would I why would I choose the Air over the regular? Well, we can we can start with the the 8th gen iPad, right? And I think especially someone who's new to iPad and wants to get into that experience and and wants to have 
again, just this incredibly great value in terms of its capability and its functionality. It's perfect at doing all the things the original iPad, you know, did, and that we said it's the the space between the the notebook and the phone. It could it's perfect for reading or you know being on the web, email, that kind of stuff. But of course, we've also been bringing other technology to it. So I think with the pencil and the smart keyboard, you have so much flexibility in that device. So I think it's just a really really solid device uh, for almost anybody, and and I think it's it's been really well received. You know, stepping up to the iPad Air again, it, it's it's all about bringing some of these pro technologies down. And I think there you get to take advantage of the bigger screen, the greater performance. Maybe if, if you're a user who's pushing more into higher performance things, whether it's, you know, you want to push harder in gaming or you want to be, you know, doing video editing or other things and taking advantage of that more powerful processor, um, it's just a great option there. And of course, the colors. I mean, we were so excited to be able to bring colors to, to iPads. So I think that's a, that's just anyone, you know, who's just excited about the device and showing it off and having those colors, it's, a, it's the perfect option. And then I think the pros, you know, really it's it's stepping up into that next level. What 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 do you want to do? How do you want to push things forward? Um, it's, it's amazing how powerful these devices are and some of the use cases whether it's photo editing or video editing or, you know, the AR stuff we talked about, you know, someone really wanting to push farther into AR, it's just an incredible platform for that. And then I think the, in particular, the 12.9, I mean, that's just kind of the ultimate, you know, experience with the, with the big canvas. And, you know, I think it's been, it's been huge for creative pros and artists and anyone who wants that extra space. And, and, and I think, as you said in the beginning, Justine, People who are saying, you know, maybe this is the only device I want. I want this to be my computing device because I value all these other capabilities and it can do everything I want, you know, that I want to do. And I think it's uh, it's really great for that. And then lastly, of course, we have the Mini. And I think, you know, we, we've talked about sort of the line of iPads and the Mini's a little bit off to the side as I think the people who want the Mini know they want the Mini. It's this incredible form factor. It's super versatile. It's used in all sorts of different ways. I think bringing the pencil to it was, it was a huge upgrade in terms of it's this perfect little kind of moleskin replacement, you know, note-taking device. People just have to think about what it is that they, they want most and then uh, kind of look through the options. And I think, as Bob said, our goal is to make sure that we've got something for everybody. The Mini is really great. It's so cute. Like when I did the review, when you guys released that with the, the Apple Pencil support, I was like, this is incredible. I mean, it really is so small and compact. And especially for kids, I feel like that's the perfect size for them. If you don't want to be giving them, you know, your iPhone or something, you're like, here you go. Or here's almost an iPhone. <laughs> the other thing, like John said, you know, we've got this variety of screen sizes and processor capabilities and camera quality and price points, all the, these areas to choose from. But we also shouldn't lose sight of the fact that across the line, you can use iPad Pencil. You've got iPad OS 4. 14 with all of those amazing capabilities. There's there's really kind of a common, you know, there's a common foundation of, of, of awesomeness across all of the line. And then you just get to choose what form factor you want that to, to take in. It's incredible, it's powerful, um, and there really is so much choice across the across the entire, you know, portfolio. And then also mouse support is huge. Yeah. Is mouse support across all iPads or? Yeah, okay, that's, across, oh, that's great. Across the line. So that's even more exciting because I feel like adding that other element to being able to, to access your screen. And I love how cool the cursor is because it still has that sort of touch feel going through and kind of like figuring out like what's the perfect way to do this, but not do it the way that was on a computer. I mean, what was that kind of thought process like? Yeah, I think you you actually just hit it on the head, right? Which is the iPad is a touch first experience. Um, and what we didn't want to do was to lose that in adding, you know, uh, trackpad uh, cursor support to it as as well, and we wanted to make sure that it had all of the kind of magical elements that that you would want and expect. The fact that you know, as you were just pointing out, it changes and morphs as you hover over different areas and, and different places, but yet still retains enough of that kind of touch experience that that you you don't lose context and suddenly think you're in a different operating system. And that really was the inspiration was to not just you know slap a cursor on to iPad OS, but to think about what would that look like in an iPad OS experience? Um, and I have to say that's something I think we do probably differently than many others. And we think, you know, just absolutely passionately about is how do we make sure that it's, you know, the, the iPad experience of a cursor as opposed to, you know, just a cursor someplace. It really is for sure. And, and I think it extended into the, uh, into the hardware as well with the magic keyboard. I mean, we were so excited to bring that out because, you know, as Bob just said, we brought a cursor to iPad in a way that felt perfectly natural to iPad. Nobody 
was shocked or confused, just kind of worked. And it was like, oh yeah, that's the way it should work. And then likewise, I think the keyboard, being able to have that experience with the trackpad, but anytime you want, just grab the iPad and pull it right off and have the, the you know, super lightweight, traditional iPad experience, I think brought it together in a way that it wasn't, let's go try to make this more like a traditional computer. It was more, what do we think this, this product can evolve into? Yeah, I mean, I absolutely love it. And even just the Magic Keyboard, it really did change the way that I use my iPad for so many things. I mean, just, oh gosh, I mean, I'm preaching to the choir here, so you guys <laughs> obviously know it's cool. So. <laughs> but it's just so but many of love, those. We love that you think it's yes. cool. That's yeah, the most but like important Yeah, so part. many of those small details, like this just the, oh, I mean, I just sit here and honestly look at the cursor. Like, it's really great. Just, she does. It's, I do. And then she tells me about it. She's like, look, look at this, look at this, look at this. And I'm like, it is cool. I know, I know. So <laughs> this is usually every other day when I'm here. I hear about it, but it really is cool. And now, I know you guys asked us what colors we would choose for the iPad Air, but what colors would you choose? Ooh. Oh, I know. I was thinking about it. All right. Uh, I'll, I'll start. I'm going green. I, I love it. Uh, I like think it's green. just, it's so, so unique. It's such a great, great color. Um, I'm going green. John? Uh, yeah, I think I'm, I'm going to have to pick blue. I, I yeah, like blue. team blue. Yeah, yeah team blue. <laughs> I was actually surprised the green is a really nice color. Who picked the colors? Was there like a big debate? Was there like a, you know, a poll that went around apples? <laughs> of like, which color would you choose? Like, how did you decide? Because there's such... I mean, they're great colors, but like who decides like what this is the final ultimate outcome? Well, I think that's all that's all tied up in, in the design process with our design team. Right. And I think that, you know, the colors are selected to, to complement the product itself and also kind of the, the, the broader palette of, of, you know, other products and everything. And so I think that's part of the secret sauce that I think our, our ID team does so well. I'm just so excited about the pink one. Not gonna lie, <laughs> All the way. I think too, one of my favorite features, because I know like there's obviously so many you know new products and new iPads pads. It could be helpful for anyone who's in the market. I always use the compare models on Apple's website and it just kind of lists out like all the, you know, the similarities, the specs and, you know, the chip types. So anyone out there who's in the market who might have questions, you can compare the models and it's a little bit helpful. That's actually a lot helpful. This was also a question that a bunch of other people, I I'd got some tweets about this, obviously with the new chipset, the A14, I feel like there might be some confusion because people are like, oh, there's an A12Z, mm. there's an A12, there's an A14, but is the A14 better than the A12Z, but that's the pro? How is the A12Z more powerful than the A12, but is it also more powerful than the A14? Yeah, so I think the, I mean, the bottom line is they're both just powerhouse chips, right? The way to think about it is that the, um, the A12Z and the iPad Pro have really been optimized for, uh, for pro workflows and experiences, especially those that are maybe more graphic graphics in intensive. I think you're going to see uh, additional performance from, from the A12Z. Uh, the A14 Bionic is obviously uh, just an amazing uh, feat of uh, engineering um, the first five nanometer uh, process uh, chip uh, and incredibly capable um, with, you know, uh, the neural engines um, and, and all of the, you know, all of the other pieces that, that kind of come along with it. And it's got, you know, uh, six CPU cores, four GPU cores um, that are, that are incredible incredibly powerful as well. So I think when you when you think about it, they're both very, very capable. Um, the A12Z probably has an advantage when you think about kind of graphic workflows and things that are maybe more graphically intensive. Um, and the A14 has, has got just, you know, um, all around amazing capabilities. John, does that make sense? Yeah, no, I think the, that, the way that think summarizes it? it perfectly. I think, you know, as we said before, the, the Pro is about pushing the limits. And with, with the A12X, we took a huge step forward in terms of graphics performance. And then we took it even farther with A12Z. And so it's on a you know a slightly different trajectory than than A14, but uh, yeah, as, as Bob said, I think people are going to be blown away by the performance of, of of both SOCs. So it's not just looking at the numbers. It's so not. there's a lot more <laughs> that kind of goes into it. Yep. Yeah, this is super exciting. Holiday time is going to be right around the corner. How are you guys sort of like gearing up for for holiday season? For us, the the most important part is getting word out about um, uh, all these amazing. Uh, products um, and and the iPad uh, is just you know like we said this is incredibly complete lineup but it's also more and more important in our you know in everybody's lives so we think it's this it's both a practical gift but it's also just something that people will will love to to use and whether it's you know your your doodling which you can erase um, without having to you know go back to the uh, textbook or learning you know learning a new skill or a, a new language we think that there's 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 so much that that's there John and and his team and and others have been working so hard over the last you know years and certainly the last six to nine months to make sure that um, we do everything possible to to make sure that people can can get access to to these amazing products 
Yeah, I guess it's hard now because, you know, the the changes in sort of the Apple stores has been so completely different. But I think you guys have done a really great job of kind of adjusting to make this sort of the new normal with appointments because you went in the other day. I did. Yeah. And it was, everything was very, you know, up to, to code and like, well, we're doing appointments only. It was super limited. Mm-hmm. And um, I think that that's really good that they're taking all the precautions too. So, well, I think that's one of the great things, right? Is that what has always been the hallmark of Apple retail has been just these amazing people right? The, the people that you go in that you can ask questions of and they, they miraculously know the answer. And I think one of the things that, that's been great is some of those folks have actually now gone and an- started to answer calls when people uh, call in. So it might be you're talking to the retail specialist who you know can't work in that physical environment, but still wants to connect and provide their kind of energy expertise um, understanding um, you know via phone or or, or chat um, so wherever possible you know we all have to adapt in this in this new environment and I think the the retail team has just absolutely done a, a phenomenal job um, and obviously we all hope and long for the day where you know we can all go back in and just kind of hang out and explore in in the store but until that day we're just going to make sure that we're giving people the information um, and kind of the connection that they that they that they really want want um, in in whatever way we can do safely. For sure. And I think you guys have done a great job. So it's it's been great to, to sort of have you guys again set that standard of how retail should be done. And I think that was one of the things that I really miss. Like I would just go into the Apple store and just hang yeah. out. And I think, you know, I do look forward to the day that we can do that again, because a lot of the new stores, they started shaping them for mm-hmm. that kind of activity mm-hmm. to come in and learn. We went to one of the, the Today at Apple sessions and learned to draw on, like, on the iPad. It was one of the most fun. We brought all of our friends and we just like hung out. And that's, oh, yeah. Uh, oh my gosh, it's making me so sad. I know. Yeah. But it's okay, we will get there again yeah. one day. But yeah, in the meantime, Apple has been doing an incredible job. Even the support. So if you know, you're not, after you have the product, I was texting Apple support the other day. I didn't even know that was a thing. <laughs> I texted you, I go, I'm talking to Apple via text. <laughs> like it was just, in, it, it was incredible. I was like so shocked that it was a thing. So having like that type of accessibility too, cause I don't really like talking on the phone. So Mm -hmm. I handled my solution texting Apple support and it was incredible. Well, this has been really awesome. I guess one last question. What is, if you, well, okay, I guess it's a two part. So do you have a favorite app and what's your favorite Apple arcade game? That's a tough question. You go first, I know, Bob. I'm so sorry. <laughs> I've stumped you guys. Oh my the thing though I love most about arcade really is just I can dip my toe into any one of a number of games and just and just try them. Because it's one of those things where um, I'm not a heavy gamer, but I enjoy just, you know, those little moments and, and joyful experiences. And I only know if it's the right thing if if I can spend like two or three minutes in it and, and play it. And that's always been a big barrier for me to, you know, go buy a game or download it or something like that that but with arcade i've got them all right there on the on the app side i think there are a myriad of 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 great applications out there um i do think um when i look at things like photoshop and illustrator and kind of these incredibly powerful tools that that i occasionally use in in my uh you know work and and home life it's just uh, i'm always amazed at, at what they can do and how well they're able to take advantage of all those those capabilities yeah and, and i'm with, with with bob on the uh on the pro stuff in particular with pencil i think one of the ones that i've had a lot of fun with is is lightroom and i actually hadn't used it that much prior to to using it on the ipad and back when we could do more traveling i like to to go on trips take a lot of pictures and the experience of on the flight on the way back home actually going in and doing my edits and everything on on my photos was was mind-blowing at first and super fun and and powerful and that's always been really exciting to do awesome lightroom's my favorite too jenna's rolling to lightroom i love it it's great (laughs) Well, thank you guys. Was there anything else that you wanted to add that we should look out for or anything else that you'd like to say to the people? (laughs) It is amazing that in the last year, in the last, you know, nine months, um, the entire full size iPad lineup has been reinvigorated, reinvented, kind of made made fresh. And I'm just thrilled and kind of look look forward to uh, like you having more and more people uh, unboxing them in the next, you know, uh, you know, three, four months. We're just really excited that 10 years in to see where, where iPad has come, right? And, and you know, even going back a little bit into last year with, with iPad OS and, you know, then with all the updates this year, we have tremendous breadth in the line, all these new capabilities and use cases. It's been a pretty 
it's been a pretty amazing and fun 10 years and we're we're all super excited about the next 10. I still can't believe it's I been can't 10 either. years. That's insane. <laughs> wow. I'm like shocked. Should we should we plan on uh, 10 years from today? So I'll see you guys right. uh You got it. 20 yep. 30. <laughs> Cool. Almost I will send you an iCal invite. <laughs> <For> 2030. Yeah. <laughs> oh my gosh. Oh, that's expected in your inbox shortly. <laughs> we'll look for it. Thanks Thank so much for the time. This has been a ton of Thank fun. You Thank you. Thank you. Awesome. We appreciate it. Bye. 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 See you. Bye. Jenna, this is so much fun. I know. That was amazing. And Bob and John, thank you guys so much for being on our podcast. That was incredible. This was a really great way to celebrate 10 years of iPad. I can't believe it. Like a decade is a very long time. I know. I mean, it feels like this year has been 10 years all crammed into, you know, the past seven months. So just to kind of really kind of relive the the history of the iPad and what it has done over the course of the past six months to help people learn, to help people connect, just even... FaceTime. That's the only way that we've seen our family. Mm -hmm. I know it's, it really is crazy. And it kind of gets me excited too about the future. Like what is the future of iPad going to be? I know we're kind of living it right now, but what is it going to look like over the next 10 years? Are we going to have a podcast still? I don't know. I wow. mean, I would hope so. What's the future of technology going to be? It's, it's crazy to see, you know, we were on the streets of San Francisco waiting for the iPad and now we're here 10 years later talking about it. I'm excited to see what and the fact happen. that we started this podcast because of the iPad. I was kind of joking when I was doing the iPad Pro review, and I was like, "Man, it'd be really cool if we started a, a podcast." And then I made like a fake little intro. I was like, "Welcome to the Pandemic Podcast." Hey, everyone! It's I Justine from I Quarantine Headquarters. Today, we're going to be talking about some stuff that I've been doing, and I've been doing a lot of things. I've been putting eyebrows on my dog. I've been learning to edit on my iPad. And now a word from our sponsors. I don't have any yet, but we can get some. And now here we are actually making it a serious thing. And we just added some host photos <gasps> on know. Apple Podcasts. Also, I updated our main anchor page that has our main image. So I updated that with our oh. new logo. Oh so gosh. we have a lot of really fun stuff. And I think it's really fun kind of doing this because it's, it's different than anything that we've really done before. Mm -hmm. I mean, I had a podcast in 2006, but- Wow, that's also a long time ago. I know it has changed so significantly. I mean, now we have a 4K podcast on YouTube. That is true. If you guys are listening to this and you want to watch it, we do have all the episodes uploaded on youtube.com slash same brain. Or if you're watching it and you want to listen, it is anchor.fm slash same brain. We usually listen to our voice messages we and we read our reviews, which we'll be doing next time. But this was a special edition. So for this episode, we're just going to, we're going to stack them up for the next one. Yeah, so. no, I actually did see we do have some new voice messages, which is exciting, but I'm super excited about this episode. Super excited for future episodes. So again, thank you guys so much for supporting our little fun endeavor. And hopefully we can, you know, just, uh, you know, we plan to just keep making content. Thank you guys so much for listening or watching, and we will see you again next for episode 17. Whoa. <gasps>